Hello, and welcome to another fun fill we're going to do today. We got a cool idea from a viewer actually to see if we could uh work out the best way to hook up uh multiple uh horizontal routing matrices which that with the sequence block from Toybox and the sampling pack is kind of the cornerstone of how you can build like a a sequencer, you know, gated rack or a sequencer drum rack, basically. Some sort of sampler rack, you know. Um, and, you know, find out a way if we can sort of bring multiples of these, you know, sequence and routing matrices together. Because it would be cool to have, you know, different types of sequences and say the same, you know, whatever arrange arrangement or, you know, just ultimately the same instrument. So to have multiples of these would be killer because then you could set up multiple sequences, right? So how can you duplicate this? And how can you bring it all together into a mix and all that all that good shit? So let's walk through this um this rack that I put together on one of the previous episodes. I just named it Drum Matey. So I must have uh, must have this set up weird. So let's go ahead and just set this up now. And I may need to. Sometimes if you find that these aren't working, what you can do is go into the um, and go into the properties, and you can make sure that you're properly connected. And you know, typically mine tend to work best on um, Omni. So that's cool. And then let's No. Not that one. I don't want to do that one. Cool. That's all right. This is the mixer. This is the mix out anyway. And um, this is what we want. This is already set up. That's already set up. So cool. I've got some controls set up. Whatever. So I, this is just, I'm just having fun. But essentially, to walk you through what I did on this instrument is I essentially um, I set up a um, sequence and a routing matrix from the toy box sampling pack. 
and I routed all of these to uh, the routing matrix. I routed the gates of these to these individual drum modules. So here's a couple of kick drums, here's a snare, and then here's a, you know, kind of a slightly variable uh, gate repeated hi-hat. And uh, the outputs or the audio outputs of these are all going into a drum mixer. So the drum mixer then goes out to a distortion as well as a reverb, a compressed uh, sidechain compressed reverb uh, that all goes into a mixer out. So this drum mixer then goes into this mixer, uh, which allow me to uh, bring in the distortion and the reverb. So, you know, tone those down a little bit. And, um, you know, it's just cool. So this is the, the kind of drum uh, sequencer that I have set up right now. Now, if we wanted to uh, duplicate this, how would we do that? And what would that look like? So that would look something like what I've already kind of got going on my drum matey dose. <laughs> which the name just comes from number two. So uh, essentially, it's the same um, rack. It's the exact same rack, but um, it's basically got a second uh, routing matrix, and those are merged into a gate merge, and then all of that goes out uh, to the individual drum sounds which are then mixed and you know run through the same mixer and compression and you know different signals that then happen at the sort of the mix sound sculpting stage so <clears throat> this is you know through this chainer and then hooking that up to these sequences and these routing matrices i can now have two different sequencers oh So this one fires first a couple times, and this fires second a couple times. And you see it's all merged here. And so the merge is what then goes out to all the drums. So how do I set this up? <clears throat> it's real simple. So let's start again with the, um, with the drum matey, just the first one. open this guy up and how do we build that second thing well first off I know these are probably gonna need to go on a third row and I'm gonna put my next you know my other sequencer right out here beside it most likely so I mean you can arrange this shit however you want this is just to taste but anyway what I do now is what I've been experimenting with is hiding the uh, cables uh, when it's appropriate. When you have a lot of cables on the screen, you can't even get to some of these uh, controls or gate controls and stuff. It's it's helpful. Uh, so I'm going to try working in this way. If I need to see the cables, I need to see them, but we'll see how it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by looking up the sampling pack from toy box and using the chainer so this is the key right here now how does this work well you can read it and you can see how it works the chainer block can be used to chain together multiple sequence blocks into longer sequencers it can also be used as a clock divider clock router hmm seems like that might be what we wanted to do but how do we know how the fuck do we know well <clears throat> The only real way to know is to hook it up and see. That's what you do. Suck it and see, as they say. So I'm going to hook up the gate and the reset to the chainer. Now, it's already also hooked up, so I've done no harm here. I've not really even messed with this or broken anything here yet. But I'm just going to hook this up to the chainer and see what it does. Ah, okay. Interesting. I see what it's doing. So while it's running this, as I would expect, this chainer is running a certain number of steps on 
this output, then this output, then this output, then this output. Okay, so what controls the number of steps? What controls the number of gate clicks each one? That's these controls here. And so this controls the number of steps that happen at each one. So say I wanted to play through this twice, then what I would do is I would set this to 16 actually. And uh, if I restart it, then I'll reliably get 16, you know, out of each of these. And since the total here is set to 32, it's now only going to play 16 out of <clears throat> these two outputs. Now, if I set it to 64 and restart it, and I get 16 here, that's 32, that's 48, 64. So, you know, you get how you can make this happen. And you could, in a creative way, you could use this at all the outputs. It just depends on what you set for the steps control, the number of steps in each sequence, and the number of steps in the chain. So, you know, each sequence is one output, and each output is chained together to run from top to bottom. So, badass. Now, I'll set it to 32. That's what, it kind of, what I want to do for our purposes today. Now, <clears throat> how would I then hook this up? So the main thing we want to do is, I mean, you have to, if you have multiple gate signals that are going to then converge and trigger a single, you know, audio creation tool, then what you have to do is merge those together. So I'm going to actually start with that. I'm going to say toy box merge and I know that they have a gate merge and this is what I want right here because then I can take the output of these sequencers and I can hook them up to the gate merge so that I can ensure that okay if this is channel one <clears throat> this is, you know, then I'm going to have a second sequencer out here that's going to go into channel two, but at least we know they're always going to be merged together. And then I can take this output and go to the drums. So actually, why don't I do that now? Since it's going to work the same anyway. So here's our two kicks. Here's our snare. And then we'll go out to our hi-hat. So we already have, if I show the cables again, we already have our gate merge set up from our first sequencer and going out to the drum signals now. Now we can set up our second sequencer and it'll just kind of be seamless. So what I would actually just do is duplicate each of these. I mean, you can pull a second one in here, whatever you want to do. Um, so that's just, I kind of just duplicated earlier. Let's just try a different way. So let's say toy box sequence. And that's just the sampling pack sequence. So we're just gonna use a second one. No big fucking deal. And then also we're gonna say toy box routing matrix and we want the sampling pack, the horizontal one. So now we're cooking with gas. Now, what I want to do <clears throat> is I want, because if you look at the sequencer and I pull the cables up again, the sequencer is still being triggered by, follow these back, still being just triggered by the clock. So I want to, I want, the clock is also triggering the chainer. So I want the chainer to start chaining things together. I want to chain the first sequencer and then chain the second sequencer after it. So that's going to be this first output, then the second output. But I got to set it up. So this is the thing that's feeding the sequencer. So what I then have to do is I need to set up the output from the chainer to the sequence. And now I, I have a missing, I have some space here because I have nothing set up. So it's only triggering this for a couple of rounds and then it's triggering this one. So I'm going to set up the gate to the second sequence <clears throat> and go ahead and set up all the cables that are needed to trigger the second sequencer. And this looks fairly clean. You can still drag cables, you can still make your connections, but um, it's actually pretty damn clean. 
without showing the cables. You can still kind of see the color codes with the cable inputs. So good stuff. You can deal with this. And now it looks like we have some business. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to definitely output each of these output signals just like, you know, this is still kick one, kick two, snare, hat. So now we want to come into the gate merge for each of these. And again, we're still not hearing anything because we don't have anything set up on the matrix yet, but we'll just make all our connections and then we should start being able to hear some audio. Now let's start seeing what we can do. So you see it, it's happening. And um, I have all the connections that I've made in this beast to thank for it. But now we have a cohesive sort of double sequencer. And you do it with a chainer. So theoretically, I could now set up a third one or a fourth one or whatever I wanted to do. I could set it up so that this only triggers it once. So say I wanted to uh, say this was just eight steps, then it would just trigger it one time. Let's try this. So now I need to actually change the number of steps here. So instead of 32, this ought to just be 16. So we have no space and it still just goes out of these first two outputs. So cool. So this is, this is pretty close, it's, it might not be exact, but this is pretty close to what I showed towards the beginning. So it's just a double sequencer. Here's the reverb compressed thing, here's the <clears throat> DJ filter and distortion. I'll put these before, since they are effects. Now the connections make a little bit more sense. It's actually not a bad arrangement. I'll just go ahead and save this. Drum midi dose. Replace. Because that's how I roll. This works. Um, but boom, there you have it. Double sequencer, triple sequencer, quadruple sequencer just depends on whatever your computer can handle you know but ultimately um, this is badass
Until next time.